Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Are you that super nice person who has a ton of friends, but not a lot of girlfriends or boyfriends? Do you find that no matter what you do, the opposite sex somehow, in some way, shape, or form, puts you in the friend zone? And you try all these different things. You're saying, I'm so nice. I don't understand why I don't get asked back out on that second date. You compliment your dates. You're accommodating. You're polite. You thank them for a great evening only to get nothing in return or to hear those dreaded words back to you. You're such a great person, but I just didn't feel the chemistry. So <laughs> you may then believe that all women like the bad boys or the men like challenging bitchy gals. But the truth is, is that both men and women like nice people. That's, you know, it's not that we all don't like nice people, but there's usually an element that's missing. We want the nice people, the nice dates, partners to also be confident and sexy, a little mentally challenging and alluring. Being stuck in a friendship and wanting more is so frustrating. It's a frustrating position to be in, especially when it happens over and over again. So it's on the top of my mind because I recently worked with this guy who constantly fell in the friend zone. And, you know, looking at his profile was almost shocking because here he is. He's successful. He's good looking, young, polite, attentive to women. And when he and I first spoke, he explained to me that he kept getting into relationships in the past where women controlled him in some way, shape, or form, or had to be fixed. And he found himself being sucked into the vortex of these relationships that were not good for him in the end, but stayed in it, of course, to fix the problems or fix women. Recently, he contacted me and he was in a complete dating rub. I mean, women he was attracted to online wouldn't respond to him. Dates weren't progressing past the third date. And he said that they just wanted to be friends in the end. And he wasn't meeting women or trying to meet them in any other way. And interestingly, most of his friends in a social group were women. And he said he mostly felt comfortable with women. So, of course, as a therapist taking his history, I understood a little bit more. And he told me that he grew up with mostly an absent father. And the little contact that he had with him wasn't a great role model of what he said a man should be. And so he felt more comfortable with women, with, you know, with his mom and in touch with his feminine energy. So then I met him and I kind of diagnosed the issue. He was in fact getting caught in the nice guy friend zone. So here's what we found and we worked on that helped him elevate his alpha energy and confidence. Number one, and first and foremost, had to go shopping. We had to work on his wardrobe. I mean, look, he, he was good, really good looking, but he was playing it small. He had ill-fitted jeans. He needed a total reboot and getting more stylish. And what was fun to do was helping him put a little more edge and sex appeal into his image. It really made a difference, of course. And immediately, he started embodying that confidence, that sexy confidence. And he moved his body differently, too. And that was the second thing we worked on was his body language. I noticed because we went after we went shopping, we went to a bar to talk to women. As he was talking to the women, he was standing really far really far from them, oddly so. So there was this big space and gap in between the women and himself. So he also kind of diverted his eye contact. He just looked a little anxious. So we worked on him getting closer to women when he was talking to them and making more eye contact and being more comfortable with that. Then as he was talking to the women, Oh my gosh, he was asking way too many questions. So he kept firing questions at the women and he was offering nothing about himself. So we really had to work on, you know, having him share more stories in the context of the conversation so women would find him interesting. He also let the, the women lead way more than they should have. You know, he was very passive in his engagements. He agreed with everything. And so... 
we really had to work on having him stand his ground and be okay with a little challenge and you know what what he stood for and let the woman know that we ended up talking to this woman at the bar and lo and behold she was from the very same hometown that he was from and so we were here in LA he's from Denver and she was in Denver super cute totally his type but again he was kind of losing it and she was totally interested in first because of course he had the clothes on but the minute he started engaging in conversation he was losing her and then she she didn't like her drink so he just kind of stood there and smiled and she's like i would love a new drink and she was just kind of <laughs> she was just kind of staring at him and he just smiled and said oh yeah you should get another drink and i whispered to him take care of it. And he, it was almost like I woke him up. And so he's like, oh, oh, let me, let me help you with that. So it was kind of like, again, this like hesitancy, this passiveness that was exuding from him. So we really worked on getting out of his head, not filtering himself and going after what he wanted. And guess what? It worked. I got a text from him after I left him to practice on his own. He said he talked to a bunch of women that night and he ended up making out with one of them. <laughs> Total success story, right? Well, obviously the journey will continue and I will help him doing the phone coaching and excited to help him date a different way and attract a healthier relationship too. Now, as some of you know, I give my clients homework because I believe it's crucial in people reaching their goals and getting results. And one of the first books I gave him to read, and quite honestly, I give to almost all my male clients, it's called No More Mr. Nice Guy. This is, to me, one of my favorite books. It's amazing. And I am super honored and excited to have the author on my podcast today to help me talk about how both men and women can get out of the friend zone. He is internationally recognized authority on the nice guy syndrome, the author of No More Mr. Nice Guy and Dating Essentials for Men, which is a new book I'm super excited about. The, he's also director of TPI University. He is a frequent guest on radio talk shows and has been featured in numerous local and national publications. Through his book, online classes, workshops, podcasts, blogs, consultation, and therapy groups, he has helped change lives of countless men and women around the world. And as a result of his work, he has helped thousands of nice guys transform from being passive, resentful victims to empowered, integrated males. Ah, he lives in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I'm coming to visit you. Welcome, Dr. Robert Glover. Uh, Kim, I'm going to have to send you a shorter bio intro next time. <laughs> I said they're cringing listening to that. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow you got a long bio intro. Thank you for inviting me. And, and yes, the, the, the doors are open down here in Vallarta. It's, it's wonderful here. Oh, my God. Do you ever coach there? Do you ever bring nice guys down there? Sure. I do uh, two or three workshops in my house down here every year. Uh, oh. small, small groups, about eight guys. And, yeah. Uh, they love it. They come down here and have a great workshop and just in, enjoy the hell out of this place. Oh my God. No, I, I, I feel a, a man in a women's workshop coming on too, as we're talking, <laughs> all these nice men and women gathering in one room, making them a little more edgy, right? There you go. Got to have I, an edge. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I mean, Again, I think it's, I love the way that we connected because the recent client that I worked with reached out to you, right? And said yeah. that I had given your book, you know, away. And then he's like, oh, well, I, do you have any men's group? And here we are. So it's, it's awesome. You know, I, I actually don't know, I know your book, but I don't know much about you. How did, how did you get into all of this? What's your backstory? Well, the backstory, I'll, I'll keep it briefer than the bio. Um, my, <laughs> as you and I were chatting just a little bit before we went live, my, my doctorate's in marriage and family therapy. Uh -huh. and, um, and so I, I was a therapist for a number of years. And in my second marriage, I, I was trying all the time to make my wife happy. And it just never seemed to work. And no matter what I did, it wasn't good enough. I always felt like I gave more than I got back. Mm -hmm. And she never seemed happy and never wanted to have sex anymore. And... And then she told me somewhere about two, three years into our marriage, she said, you need to go get help. You're passive aggressive. I thought, what? I thought, I'm a nice guy. I treat you well. I thought, you're the one who needs to go get help. You're the one who's angry and upset all the time. So um, I actually went and got into therapy, trying to figure out 
why me being a nice guy didn't make her appreciate me more and treat me better and, and give back. And luckily, I got in with some good therapists and started learning about boundaries and started learning about making my needs a priority and asking for what I wanted and saying no. And, and, and I learned good stuff. And, and what happened as a marriage and family therapist, couples would come work with me. And, and a lot of times the guys coming in with their wives or girlfriends were saying the exact same thing I was saying. I'm a nice guy. I'm the mm -hmm. nicest guy you'll ever want to meet. But she never appreciates me. I treat her better than her ex. I'm raising her kids. You know, she doesn't have to work anymore. Blah. You know, just on and on. And, and, and go, but it's never enough. When's it going to be my turn? She's always mad. She's never happy. She never wants to have sex. So I thought, oh, I can finish these guys' sentences for them. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the only one that, that has these issues. And, and I didn't realize it till a little bit later, but I was hearing the same similar things from single guys. You know, yeah. everybody tells me what a great guy I am, how I'm such a great catch, and some lucky woman's going to be so fortunate to have me someday. But, but the guys would say, how come the women that are telling me that don't want to go out with me? But they're telling me how some woman's going to be so lucky to have me someday. So what I did is I, I got these guys together and I started a No More Mr. Nice Guy group about 25 years ago. Wow. And, and we met every other week and I just started writing some chapters. Now we'd probably call them blogs. And I just started giving them <laughs> to these guys. And over time they said, you know, they and their wives and girlfriends start saying, you know, there's a lot of nice guys out there. You, you need to write a book. You need to go on Oprah. So uh, I kept writing, took about six, seven years because I was actually doing my own work as well. And, um, and then the book came out about 16, 17 years ago and uh, continues to do well. In fact, my royalty checks get bigger every year. So people like you were spreading the word about it. So, <laughs> I'll and, keep it coming. Uh, yeah. And, there, and there's just a lot of nice guys out there. So I'm a recovering nice guy. I, and, and, and where the dating part of this comes in is that I, when I, I got divorced in about 2003 and um, got out there in the dating world and I, you know, I hadn't dated since college. I sucked at it back then. I used what I call nice guy seduction. And we're, we're going to go, for, go further into that. You know, where I never would actually directly approach the woman, but might try to sit near her in class, you know, try to impress her by knowing the answers that the teacher or professor asked. And maybe, you know, volunteer, volunteer to help her do something or sit and listen to her talk about her problems and then hope that, you know, and especially hide my sexual intention from her. And, ah. and hopefully at some point she might see what a great guy I was and, and, you know, and she would make some kind of move to ask me out or, you know, and, and it just didn't work. So when I became single in my late forties, I decided I, I had to, I had to figure out how this thing worked. I already had kind of figured out the nice guy thing and that mm -hmm. that wasn't, that wasn't the most effective way to attract women or turn them on and keep them around. But I, I had to learn a lot of other skills when it came to dating and, and I actually got pretty good at it pretty quickly. And um, several of my clients said, well, you're, you're getting a lot of dates. You're going out a lot. You're, you know, Hmm. You have success at this, teach us. And I thought, I'm, I, I can't teach you guys. I'm not a dating guru, but, you know, I started teaching this stuff about oh, 12, 13, 14 years ago and uh, have been teaching both single men and men in relationship er, ever since. And when, when we got on you know, this call a little bit earlier, you said, well, let's talk about getting out of the friend zone. I thought, yeah, that's right up, that's right up my alley. And that's <laughs> while, while you were talking, I, I had this legal pad and I've got a legal pad full of suggestions for getting out of the friend zone. And I started checking off the ones that you shared as well. So, um, Oh, you know, nice. We're, we're, we're going to have a fun chat. We are going to have such a fun chat, but I have a question though. Like as you were, you know, doing your nice guy thing when you were single and you were talking to all those women, but not in the sexual, you know, tone and stuff like that. Did you have a lot of friends who were women? Like there, did you hear that too? Like, Oh, you're such a great guy. You're so nice. Like, yeah, back in, yeah. in my younger days, like I said, I was, you know, mm -hmm. when I was a teenager and young adult college age, right. Um, yeah. And, and when you mentioned that, a lot of female friends, one of the things that I tell men, and this is especially, was true for men in relationship and single guys, because guys in relationship get friend zoned by their girlfriend or their wives, where ah. all of a sudden their, their, their wives or girlfriends aren't particularly turned on by them anymore either. And mm -hmm. all they want to do is talk about, okay, what are we going to do today? You know, what are we going to have for dinner? What are we going to do with the kids? You know, where are we going to go on vacation? And it's just like, a, it's a friendship. There, there's not much more to it. So, what, um, what I tell guys is you got to get out of the nursery. And I uh -huh. see this with men of all ages, but I especially see it with younger men that have 
many of them did not have a good connection with their dad growing up. Most were more comfortable. They were around their mothers. They went to preschool with women teachers. Elementary school had all female teachers. And then when they got to junior high and wanted to start connect with women, it's kind of like, if I can be different from the other men, if I can hide my sexual agenda and not be that guy that I've heard women complain about, then, then the women will be, think I'm different and they'll be interested. Mm. Now, along the way, a lot of these guys, part of the nursery for me is where they never actually get out and challenge themselves in life. Maybe they're, uh, they're spending yeah. a lot of time watching television, on the internet, unfortunately surfing for porn too much of the time. Mm -hmm. Just, just wasting time, maybe smoking a lot of dope, just, just nothing in their life is challenging. And then they wonder, how come I can't get a girlfriend? How come, how come women like me and want to call me up and talk to me, but nothing more than that. And, and a lot of it is, is, is I, I tell men, you got to get out of the nursery. You do have to connect with men. You do have to mm -hmm. go get connected more with your masculine side. You got to get out and challenge yourself and don't try to do it alone. A lot of these guys are going it alone. They're, yeah. they're kind of real loners. And I mean, I, I'm in a men's group. I'm, I'm married 63 mm -hmm. years old and I'm still in a men's program. I've got a coach and I still, you know, find ways to go get that connection with masculine energy. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, and actually you had a good segue into what I wanted to talk about. And like you said, how do, how do men get out of the friend zone? But I want to add something kind of fun to this conversation since I work with so many women and we have a lot of women listeners on this podcast that do you know that women fall in the friend zone too? You told me that before we started <laughs> recording. I said, really? Um, Isn't it funny that you, I, you a know, lot of men are really? surprised by this. Well, well okay, I'm, I'm going to be blunt. We, yeah. we men think, well, you've got breasts. That's all you need. You know what? <laughs> you know, what, you know, what more do you need to, to, you know, to get what you want? So, um, so well, women... This, even yeah. the breasts fall into the friend zone. Even right? the breasts fall and the legs and the ass, all that falls into the friend zone because that's just it is that I think a lot of these women don't realize they have the ass and the boobs and you know, like that's, that's part of the problem. And so they don't own that. And, and what's really interesting is that, but cause I, you know, again, I coach men and women in the field often and both sexes are extremely surprised that the opposite sex has so much trouble. So what this says is that, you know, we're all in this together. We all have struggles. We all yeah. have, you know, confidence issues. And I, I find that so many of the things that you offer men and, and advice it actually applies to women too, but it's a little bit different. Obviously, we are different because we do have the boobs, right? I mean, there are a little bit of differences between, you know, the genders. So, um, so yeah, I thought we could give like three to five top tips on how to get out of the friend zone. You, you can cover the men. I'll cover the women. Okay. And let's see where we fall. You mean, you mean I got to narrow down this list of about 15 things I've got in front of me? I know. <laughs> Well, I'll just have to have you on. This will be like a teaser before play. All right. All right. We'll call it for, for play podcast. Well, how, how about this? How about I throw one out that might apply to both men and women? Um, sure. Yeah. Here's what I tell guys and listening okay. to you. I'm thinking this applies to women as well. Okay. And, and guys complain about being put in the friend zone. And I tell men, women do not put guys in the friend zone. Men put themselves there. Mm, by mm -hmm. approaching and engaging with women like we want to be friends with them, like, like I'm a nice guy, let's be friends, we automatically affect the, how the woman views us. There is no polarity. There, there is no edge. There is no what I call emotional tension. And so all of a sudden, that's all she ever thinks is that, oh, we just want to be friends. And most women like having guy friends. And so that's just one more guy friend to, to add to their list. And so I, 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 that's where I always begin. This is where we are not being victimized by the opposite sex. Yes. This is something we are doing to ourselves. Exactly. And I actually, and I love that because it's the same message I give. And to know that you have the power to change that. That's what, what's great about not, you know, blaming the opposite sex for any of this stuff is that if you knew that you had the power 
to create that, you also have the power to change it. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we're going to dive into. All right. So yes, that is exactly something that happens to women too. So that was a perfect place to start. So what would you say is the first tip that you would give men to not lead as friends, like as when you st first start conversations with women? Okay. Uh, here's what I tell guys something that they have a hard time really embracing at first. And I tell them you have to be yourself because mm -hmm. most guys think, well, women don't like me just the way I am. Cause they, you know, they never talk to me. They never do this and they never do that. And so they think, well, I got to go learn pickup or I got to go learn these lines or I got to go learn uh, how, yeah. how, to hip, how to hypnotize women or, or buy them enough drinks or whatever. And so I tell guys really the confidence of being comfortable in your own skin and living life on your terms is an amazing turn on to women. And yes. the guys say, well, but you know, women don't seem to like the real me. And, and where I usually challenge them, I say, probably you've never let women see the real you. The, the real you has rough edges. The real you has opinions. The real you is funny. The real you is bright. The real you could be a total geek. Uh, the real you has a sexual agenda. The, and I tell guys, Women know why we're talking to them. You know, we think we've got our sexual agenda. Oh, here. we know. We we know. I, I, tell, <laughs> I, I, I tell men that women know why we're talking to them. But if you're hiding you, if you're repressing you, thinking you've got to be something else, like this really nice guy with no flaws that never rocks the boat, so women will like you. Um, I, I tell them that that's that's really the kiss of death. And and the piece of information. Two things I tell guys. I. I since I work with men, I'm pretty blatant with them. I tell them two things uh, about this dynamic. I say, number one, if you approach a woman with confidence, she experiences the exact same brain chemicals of arousal that you would experience if she lifted up her shirt and showed you those proverbial breasts. <laughs> it's, it's wired yes. into us. It's wired into us. And if you're approaching her passively, hoping to get her approval, you know, not trying to do anything that might upset her, there's nothing to flip that switch that those brain chemicals start flooding her brain. And the other thing I, I tell guys is guys think, well, if I go really slow, she finds out I'm a great guy, then maybe she'll want to be my girlfriend and sleep with me. And I tell men, no, mm -mm. it doesn't work that way. Mm -mm. Women know probably within the first 30 seconds what the probability is of they're going to have sex with you. And then women don't have sex with a man because they got to know him. They get to know the man they want to have sex with because they do have to go through some of these social expectations that, okay, you know, go slow enough to get to know him. Then you can have sex with him. But guys get that backwards, especially the nice guys that think, well, if they get to know me, then they'll want to have sex with me. Never happens that way. Yeah. So I, I tell guys, number one, be yourself. Don't hold back. If, if you got a funny thought, say it. If, if you want to move close, move close. If you, you know, if you want to grab her hand and lead her across the floor, do it. Don't hold back. Be yourself. That's awesome because I hear a lot of men then push back on that, you know, when I, it's the authenticity I think that you're talking about. And I, I call it shape shifting. These guys kind of morph into something that they're not. And by yeah. the way, women do that too. Um, it, is that, but then they say to me, but I don't know the real self. I don't know who I am. So how do you, how do you teach them that? <laughs> that's how I make my, that's how I make my living. Um, <laughs> Good. Well, here, here's the deal is that, you know, I, I wrote a, a forward to No More Mr. Nice Guy when, when my publisher kind of revised it and cleaned it up a little bit uh, a couple years ago. And I wrote about kind of what I'd learned, what I'd experienced in the last 15 years since the book was originally published. And I said, more than anything else, what I want to say is that whatever we call recovery or personal development or whatever you want to call it, it is not about becoming a different person, a new person, mm -hmm. a better person. It's about, about becoming more ourselves, learning to love ourselves, like ourselves and be who we are. So, you know, I, I you know, because I've got tons of classes and workshops, I can't give it in, in three yeah. minutes. What yeah, I yeah. Do. But it really does come down to learning to live life on your terms and really learning to like yourself and letting go of that need to get constant external validation and approval, learning to validate yourself from within. And, and again, that goes back. We got to get out of the nursery to do that. We yeah. Gotta and we got to go challenge ourselves. Probably got to do some therapy, uh, mainly get out of our comfort zone and live at our edge, find out what we're capable of. 
And this is a lifelong process. As I said, I'm, I'm still actively involved in challenging myself. But the biggest part of this is, and I found this when I was a single guy dating. I, I never tried to get women to like me. I never used approach. Mm. I never used to pick up. I didn't have to. There's just something about me being out in public, being comfortable in my own skin, not holding back. I, I, you know, I'm funny. I'm intelligent. I, I, I'm not shy about touching, being affectionate. I'm not shy about saying, hey, let's go do this. And I used to be. But I, when, mm -hmm. I quit, when I quit trying to do it all right and just started being me, I was just blown away and amazed with how much that attracted. I use the term attracted the feminine in general, mm. women, opportunity, babies, dogs, cats, right. women, my mother's age, you know, it just started attracting feminine to me because I, I, be, I became magnetic. I, it developed a polarity that, that was, that is very attractive to the feminine. Well, I, I love this because I think what you're saying, and, and this is exactly the crust of like, you know, where people's confidence lives, both men and women, is that it's recognizing all that you are. So if you don't know who you are, start with knowing what you are, what you're about, what your strengths are, you know, your personality, what you look like, you know, it's just all the different parts of you. And when you lead with that and you go after what you want, versus what you think the women want or hesitate because you don't think they want, right? That's when the magic happens. And I, yeah, no, that's a great one. Okay. Be yourself. And obviously I could say the same thing about women, but I'm going to do something a little different because this is what the number one thing that I see when women fall in the friend zone. And that is they don't lead with their femininity. Mm -hmm. So I say dress the part, ladies. You have got to own your body, own and, and be comfortable with that. And then there's nothing like getting a great outfit that, you know, helps you with that. I call it a dating costume. So whether, <laughs> <laughs> right? So put on the feminine skirts and the dresses and the high heels. I mean, men, men love that. They really do. They, they love the feminine flair. They like the shiny objects. They like the flowy hair. They like the perfume that, you know, it's the, it's the stuff that makes men smile. And, um, but you know, a lot of women will push back and say, but that's not me. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not like that. And I don't want a guy to like me for just, you know, the sexuality piece. So then what happens is she shuts it down completely. Yeah. So it's really helping women getting comfortable with that through, you know, and that's why I love doing the makeovers because it's, it's getting outfits that specific to their body type, their lifestyle to them so that they walk in with confidence, but it's a different outfit and a different attitude than their powerhouse corporate one. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is to really help shake that off and get you know, women into their feminine. So that's my tip for the ladies. All right. And, and you know, I see that with, with men as well. One thing with guys, you know, this is, this is your yeah. wheelhouse. Most men wear ill-fitting, outdated clothing. Uh, and guys, guys tend to wear clothes that are way too big for them. And way I, tell, too big. I tell guys, I tell guys, unless you're a professional rapper, get rid of that clothes and just the pants and shirts and hang off you, you know. Uh, Wait, and, what about the big pleated pants and the acid wash jeans? Like I've seen many of the, I've had some ceremonies getting rid of those the, too. The, yeah. the acid wash jeans? Oh, again? acid wash jeans. They're, they, okay. they're still there. I don't know if you remember okay. them from the 80s. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I'm old enough to remember. I had acid wash jeans. <laughs> right. oh, uh, my, my wife bought them for me. Uh, oh, she, that's she, so funny. She, she was updating my style. At the, she, she was getting me out, out of chinos and into acid wash jeans. So, That's so um, funny. That's hilarious. But yeah. So, uh, and I like that. And I, I get in, in modern culture that talking about masculinity and femininity can, can kind of hit, you know, uh, it, it, can, it can hit people wrong. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and I get that. And, and you know, there's parts of, of, of gender, masculinity, and femininity that are very fluid. That, and I think being yourself is being open to that fluidity. I, I, I'm very feminine in a lot of ways. I'm, I'm wearing a Lululemon shirt right now and Banana Republic shorts. So, you know, I, I, I'm, 
I got a feminine side. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sensitive in a lot of ways. More often in the relationships I get in with women, I'm more the girl. I had one, an ex-girlfriend of mine, she, she'd say to me when I get all sensitive, she said, hey, there's only room for one woman in this relationship. And that's me. You know, quit, quit being so <laughs> well, sensitive. Wait a second. I, I have to do a yeah. quick comment because I'm cheating a little bit because I get to see you. So he's, he's showing himself on Zoom right now. So I can actually see what he's wearing. And his... He's, he's kind of downplaying his outfit, but he's, he's looking pretty hot, I must say, because he has this, the, the Lululemon shirt on, but it, it's, it's well-fitted, it's tight, but then, and this is, this is the thing that's making the difference, he has tattoos and he has a little bracelet on that's giving him some edge, <laughs> and that combination is really working, so that, that's, again, like, with the guy that I talked about in the beginning, that's exactly like I got him a leather jacket that really mm -hmm. made a difference in the way even just like his casual clothes looked. Well, let, let's let's go with that one then. Um, yeah, we'll just we'll just segue into that. And I tell guys because again, you know, for most men, we can get a pair of pants and wear that same pair of pants every day for weeks, and and <laughs> we're and we're happy as long as they're comfortable and feel good. Uh, in general, women yeah. can't. You know, women can't think of wearing the same outfit. Oh my God, no. My, my wife, I, my, my, my beautiful Latino wife, um, mm. she, I take her out every Saturday night. We go out to date night. We go to a nice restaurant. We have a few we like to hit down here. She wears a different dress every Saturday night. Now, I don't I mean a different her. dress. I don't mean a different dress from last week or last month. I have never seen her wear a repeat dress. And we've been married almost three years. And, and she, she, she shows up in a new dress and they're tight, clingy, short, revealing. And not because she thinks she has to do that to, to keep my attention or keep me interested. Now, she's a woman. She also knows there's competition out there. So, but she does it because it makes her feel good, right? Bingo. She, she shows up to, th this afternoon. Um, her birthday is this Wednesday. And I've been out of town for a week. And I just got back in uh, late Saturday. And, and so we're, we're just getting reacquainted in the last day. And um, this morning she showed me a picture on, I think on Facebook, of a pair of red shoes with a bow on them. And she said, is it okay if I get these? And I said, yeah. I said, in fact, I'd like you to buy some new shoes. You buy a lot of new dresses, but you know, you don't update your shoes that much. In fact, when we go to LA in a few weeks, I think we need to go shoe shopping for your birthday. She goes, I just can't spend a thousand dollars on a pair of shoes. I go, okay, I get it. I get it. So anyway, she showed me the picture and then I, I did another interview earlier and I went upstairs and on the bed, the pair of shoes were already sitting, they were on the bed. She left them. Oh, up there nice. Her. So she'd actually already bought them and, <laughs> and was showing, is it okay if I get these? Oh, that's so, so, but what was your response when you saw the red shoes as a guy? Oh, Oh, yeah, you know my response. Uh, no, but my listeners need to hear this because I keep well, telling women to wear red and heels and because guys love that. Well, they, they say that red's the color of passion. And, mm -hmm. and of course, men notice. Of course, men like it. And, yeah. you know, as you found that, as you know, this, this is, again, how you make your living. It doesn't always take a lot for either men or women to just make a little change. I mean, like, yeah, I'm wearing a Lululemon. It's a black V-neck kind of stretchy shirt. Mm -hmm. um, a little th bracelet on my wrist is something yep. my wife and I bought uh, at a street vendor in Seattle a couple of years ago. It's little, it's little eyeballs watching over me, keeping me safe. Um, and it's those little things that, that people notice and remember. And I know like women have told me many times in the past, the three things I hear most from women that, you know, once I get to know them, they say that initially attracted um, me to them. Uh -huh. And, and these always, well, they don't surprise me anymore because I've heard them enough. Number one is they say, well, I love your bald head. I always say, well, I'm not bald, I'm shaved. And so <laughs> there's something about that that mm -hmm. for some women is a turn yep. on. Yep. Uh, the other thing, second thing I've heard the most is my hands. People, women say, I love your hands. You just have nice hands. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by the way, I, I think you probably tell men this, women tell me all the time, the two things women tend to notice first about a guy are his fingernails, his hands and his fingernails, and his shoes. And oh, yes. I, and I, you I like tell, both. I tell guys, <laughs> listen, look at your fingernails, look at your shoes, mm -hmm. and then ask yourself the question, do they project confidence and attention to detail and mastery, or do they project it's been a long time since you gave a fuck? And then right. ask yourself, would you do you? You know, based on just yeah, your- Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so 
And then the third thing that, that women tell me, this blows me away, is this, they say my walk, how I walked oh, attracted yeah. their attention. Mm -hmm. So we guys think, well, there's got to be this magic thing. And so, no, get comfortable in your own skin, you know, mm -hmm. walk the way you walk, you know, pay attention to a few little details like, you know, that the shirt fits you well. Maybe you have an accessory or two. Don't go overboard. Don't be draping gold chains and all that kind of stuff, but have an accessory or two. Um, and you don't have to go crazy. Now I do get compliments. I don't have it on right now, but I've got an Omega watch and, um, Oh, we and, love watches. I say that all the time. Yes. And, and, and men actually compliment me more than women, but, but women do notice it. They mm -hmm. just, they're using to just not connoisseurs of watches like the men are. No, but you know they, why we like them? Do you know why? I, Tell I, me why. I, I, I figured it out. I think it's because there's something about a man who wears a watch connotates success. And so we have this association with success and being a provider and, and all of that. You know, there's associations with things that we put on our body and how we mm -hmm. move. And so, yeah, no, I think that, okay, so these are good tips for both men and women, the, the dressing the part, the body language, that kind of thing. Okay. I have a, a, another tip that I'm going to give the women and then you can do the men after this. Okay. But make sure that your conversation is fun and light and a little mentally challenging, right? <laughs> don't, don't get caught in the interview ladies, you know, the Q and a sessions or talking about weather and politics and being all left brain and getting onto those top. This is probably the number one thing that I see a lot of my really successful women do and they totally get put in the friend zone because of it. So they're just another one of the guys. They, they, you know, talk sports, they, there's nothing sexy or sensual or emotive about their conversation. Mm -hmm. So what I teach women to do and actually men too, is how to tell stories, how to have fun and play games in the conversation, answer questions with questions, be playful, mm -hmm. have fun mm -hmm. with everything, you know, stop getting so serious and like so target specific on, is this the right guy to you and checking off your list? It's, it's really about that lightness that will help you see like he'll see you in a totally different light just by the way that you're talking with him. Yeah. I, I, I call, you know, that kind of woman I call for men, a buddy with breasts. Yeah. Oh, right. she's, yeah she's got boobs, but she's, she's my buddy. I take her, we go drinking, we go watch football together. You know, we watch NASCAR together. Um, and, and yeah. And, and maybe the guy never thinks of her more than, Hey, she's this cool chick. I guess. Cool yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. All right. So that's mine. What, what, what's your next one for the men? Okay. I'm, I'm going to weave a couple things in here and I, I've already mentioned uh, this a little bit. Don't hide your sexual agenda. Yes. Now, now I'm, I'm going to say this, this is nuanced. Now I'm not, I don't, I don't encourage men to just go up to women and be blatantly sexual with them. I'm a bit a big advocate. My, my mantra is choose a woman who chooses you. So be paying attention to women that are sending you, you know, signals, indicators of interest. They've already checked you out. They've already walked in front of you three times. You know, they've already bent over once. So you can kind of get a little bit of a, a shot there. Who, you know, they, me? <laughs> oh, guys don't realize women do that shit. Oh, we uh, test you. We test you. Oh. Absolutely. So when a woman's sending you those signals, she's already got some degree of interest in you. So you don't have to hide the reason that the two of you are actually going to have a conversation is to check out if and when you're going to take your clothes off together. That's why, why yep. you're talking to them. And when men hide that both from themselves. And I did that for years. I repressed it from even me. Oh, I'm not talking to her because I, you know, I don't even think about sex, blah, blah, blah. And, and you know, I hid it from myself and try and hide it from women kills what I call positive emotional tension or polarity might be another way to put it. The, the reason why men and women engage with each other is because of sexual polarity. And, and yeah, there's other reasons. There's business reasons. There's, you know, but when it, in terms of just, you know, What's going to turn us on? What's going to, you know, what's going to flip the switch? What's going to activate our biologically programmed parts of ourself? If a guy is hiding that from the woman. Now, again, I'm not saying be blatant, but if a woman's shown you some, some you know, indicators of interest, be bold. When women talk, when women find out that I teach men about relationships and dating, mm -hmm. you know, they often 
say, well, can you, can you tell men this for me? And, and I go, okay. <laughs> and, and they tell me the same <laughs> like thing. Like you're the messenger. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the messenger. Right. Go, t- go tell me what they usually say is number one, trim their nose hair and their ear hair. Oh, oh yes. So, please. So, <laughs> so please. please. We don't ask for much. I mean, we're the one we have to get all dolled up and exactly right. Like we, if you could just do the nose hairs, that's just just, really not a lot to ask. Just the nose hair and ear hair. But the other thing they say is tell men to be bold. They say, yeah. why, why will men notice us looking at them across the room? They'll look back, they'll see us smile, and then why don't they do anything? Why don't they approach? And I'll go, because you scare us. And women go, <laughs> why? And I go, because you're scary. And they go, really? We're not scary. And then, and then they go, then they'll tell me, well, how come men will, will like, if they do start a conversation with, it's kind of like you're talking about your client standing a few feet away. Yeah, and, yeah. And talking, and the woman's sending all the signals, all the signals, and the, guy, and the women say, why don't they, you know, ever get around to asking for our, our phone number? Why, why can they talk, 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 and then kind of look around a little bit and say, mm-hmm. uh, uh, hold out their hand and shake your hand and say, well, nice to meet you. You know, maybe, uh, maybe I'll bump into you again someday. And women go, why, why won't they just get to the point, <laughs> ask for our number? And I'll go, because you scare us. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but I tell guys, don't wait for the woman to put up a billboard that says, ask for my number. Or don't wait for her to put up the billboard that says, tell me to take my clothes off. Don't wait for that. If, if, you know, if she's gone on three dates with you and she, you know, you know, is affectionate and friendly and loving and don't, don't wait for her to put up a billboard that says, make your advance. Now, Uh. I yeah. get with, with the whole hashtag me too. Men are scared to death mm-hmm. of doing something wrong. And that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't teach pickup or approach. I don't, I don't teach men to go target women just because they think they're hot. I do teach men to respond to the signals of, of an open door. Hey, I'm available. Check me out. Talk to me. Ask me out. Do respond to that. And, and the, 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 three, the tips I give men, and I, I tell them, don't turn this into a technique, but just keep it in mind. And mm-hmm. I call it the three T's. And that is touch, tease, and tell. And that is, you know, be affectionate with your touch, not, not blatantly, you know, overtly uh, invasive. Tease them. Be playful like you tell the women. And every now and then, tell her to do something. Like, come on over here. Or stand up. Turn oh, around. Yes. Up yes. Because there's something yes. about that that creates a polarity, the, the positive mm-hmm. emotional tension. But most men I work with cannot do any of the three T's. They can't touch a woman. They can't oh, tease her that. at all. And yeah. they can't tell her what to do. So I say, don't turn it into a technique. Just keep it as a reminder. If you have the impulse to tease her, tease her. If you have the impulse to touch her arm, touch her arm. If you have the impulse to say, come on over here, let's go do this. Do it. Be bold. Lead. And, and it goes back to being yourself. Don't hold back. It's so, oh God, I swear to God, it's like I, we have the exact same message. I love that you're saying this. It, it's funny because when a lot of the times people are so in their head, right? Like they're worried uh-huh. about what the other people are thinking and feeling. They do assuming, they do predicting, and and then they lose the moment. And what I tell you know the men, and this is what you're alluding to is that women actually don't feel safe with that when you hesitate, you uh-huh. know, cause we don't know what you're thinking. You're, you're, it's so funny cause you're saying that, you know, the men are scared of the women, but guess what? That's why we end up not liking you because we get scared of, of your lack of confidence with yourself because we want to feel safe and secure. And that's, yes. that's really the attraction piece. It's not that we're looking for like an a-hole who's going to be like, you know, come over here and, you know, you know pull us by the hair. Um, although it did work in the caveman days, but something like that feels a little bit safe to us. So that, that part of like telling her, you know, that, that, that T is so crucial because it actually makes us feel safe. Yeah. I tell guys, yeah. women by nature are security seeking creatures. Yes. They, they, they can have a degree, a great paying job, mm-hmm. their own home, their own car, but emotionally they don't feel safe walking the planet and never have. That's what really me too is all about is women saying, I don't feel safe. And I tell men two ways that you can creep women out. One is by walking up to a woman at the gym that hasn't even looked at you or noticed you. Oh, and just right. Walk up, walk up to her and say, hi. <laughs> That's just say, That's just the say worst. hi. And, and then like, and then when she doesn't respond, like, go, oh, I'm a loser. She, you know, and the, right. the other one is if you notice a woman looking at you across the room, smiling, send, sending mm-hmm. you those 
Don't just keep like looking and looking away, looking at her, looking away, or don't, that, that gets creepy to women. They, they wonder what's, what's that guy about? He's looking at me, but he won't actually come over here and talk to me. Because the but, hesitancy seems yeah. uncertain and creepy. And yes. so don't, wait, just come and be like real and authentic, like you said, in your conversation. And here's the thing. And so this actually will segue nicely into my last tip for women is that you're saying, well, if you see a woman smiling and engaging, yeah, that would be nice if the women are actually smiling and engaging and too much of what's happening out in today's world is what's called the resting bitch face. And so <laughs> it, I heard, I heard that real. Term for the first time the other day. RBF, it's real. It's <laughs> out there. I'm trying to eradicate this one woman at a time, but I think I need to like, you know, do something about it in a bigger way so that I can really help people. And so what my third tip is flirt. Ladies, flirt, flirt. The guys need those smoke signals because mm -hmm. you've heard what Dr. Glover was saying about how they're scared. They're more scared of us than we are of them. They need the smoke signals to say, I'm approachable. Come hither. I will talk to you. I won't bite. And especially if you're beautiful. I always say it's the, the pretty women have it really tough or what guys deem as beautiful. Obviously, every woman is beautiful in each and every way. But if a guy thinks that you're beautiful, it's even harder for him. And so, you know, and the flirting, I, again, I could do a, a whole other podcast and I have on that. And actually I'm starting, you'll love this. I'm starting something called the Flirt Academy and I'm doing it nationwide and I'm giving workshops to women to help them flirt and be in their feminine and comfortable with that. So, um, you know, if you look at the definition of flirting, I think it's awesome. It's to behave as though you are attracted to someone without the serious intention of an outcome. Love now it. that right now that last part is what trips everyone up being attached to the outcome because everyone's getting ahead of it everyone is but what if but what if you know or i'm not going to turn it on because i don't want him to get the wrong impression i want him to like me for my intelligence not my sexuality like i it goes on mm -hmm. and on and on but the truth is is and you said this too it's about being playful it's about having fun. It's a creating a magnetism that just draws people to you. And so when you're with a man, if you don't give him those signals that, hey, I'm fun, I'm playful, I'm interested, and that sexuality piece that you talked about that men tone down to, women will you know, tone that down. If you don't give him that signal, he doesn't know that you like him and he doesn't want to be rejected. So he'd rather just make you a friend. And that's when you also, you hear a lot of women come back and say, you know, well, he just thinks I'm nice, but like, how come guys don't want to date me? I'm always like the girl next door, but, but I'm never the one that they want to date. And it's usually because they lack this kind of flirty skill. Uh, that, that makes perfect sense. And I mean, I love what you said about letting go of attachment to outcome. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's a core message in, in all of my dating essential stuff is, is, is I say, Hey, Buddha said that attachment is the cause of all suffering. It's also the cause of all anxiety, all clumsy approach, and, and all, all inactivity. It's when we get attached, like, oh, I want her to like me. I want him to like me. I don't want to get rejected. I don't want to look foolish. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to get stuck with somebody. But all that attachment, mm -hmm. it, it just amps up our anxiety. It amps up our fear. It makes us awkward. Often it makes us do nothing at all just because we – because it makes us so uncomfortable. Right. And, 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 you know, you know, this people just have to get out and practice, practice being social with yes. each other, practice to where every person we see, we're not thinking, is this the one? Is that the one? Should I do this? Should I do that? Mm. And again, being yourself with no attachment, it, it lets you take risk. It lets you walk through open doors knowing, Hey, I can walk back out again if it doesn't work. It lets the men risk approaching and asking for a phone number. It, it lets women risk being a little flirty and, and feeling a little vulnerable. But when we get attached to whatever we're attached to, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it, it shuts us down and, and it makes us suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I, 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 we could seriously go on for another hour. You, you realize this. <laughs> like, oh, we'll have no to come problem. back on for sure. No no, this is great. Um, wow. Well, I, we have to wrap up. I want to recap like some of the things that you said. So for the men, these the great tips that he had, you know, just be yourself. Don't hold back, you know, and, and if you don't know who you are, 
lead from your strengths. Find what you are about and lead with that. Number two, dress the part, dress well, get rid of those acid wash jeans with pleated pants <laughs> and put a little edge like Robert has in his style with some tattoos or a bracelet, something. Number three, show that sexual interest or polarity, as he put it, so that, you know, you're really, you know, showing that side of you. And finally, practice without attachment. And for the ladies, well, you heard me, dress the part, be comfortable in your feminine femininity, have more of a sexy, light conversation, and flirt. Uh, Robert, where can everybody find you? And do you have any like parting words of wisdom, I'm sure, amongst all the other wisdom pieces that you've been giving us? Yeah, I've got another hour's worth. That's fine. Um, <laughs> well, they can find me two places. Um, DrGlover.com, just D-R-G-L-O-V-E-R.com, has all my classes, workshops, and everything. My new website to go with my new book, that comes out tomorrow, drum roll, um, Dating Essentials for Men. Just go to datingessentialsformen.com. And I've got some promotions there. Um, and so, yeah, come check out Dating Essentials for Men. If you're a single guy, uh, check out the, the new book. It's available on Amazon. You can download it. And um, other parting words of wisdom. Ah, man, I've been giving you my best stuff. I know. And you I, don't, I, I, don't I, led, I led with my best stuff. Okay. I'll, 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 you know, we'll leave it at that. People will just have to listen to this and they'll get okay. all of your I got one, one more oh, you got piece. One? One okay. more piece. Okay. This, is, this is for women and, and men both. Be the decider. Mm. You, you be the one who decides what works for you and, and who you want to connect with, uh, how you want to be. Uh, going back to the pleasing behavior of trying to get people to like you and approve mm -hmm. of you and want to be your boyfriend or girlfriend and all the things we do to sacrifice and get approval. Once you start that in a relationship, it never ends. So be the decider, Love choose it. somebody who's chosen you o only, only hang out with people just that think you're amazing. Mm. Uh, any, anything less than that is a recipe for suffering and disaster. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much for coming on. This has been so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I had a blast. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, yeah, me too. And again, this has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, seltzerstyle.com, as always. And you definitely want to check out Dr. Glover's new book, Dating Essentials for Men, to learn how to create the kind of authentic attraction that he was talking about that naturally brings women to you without the games, without the games. So <laughs> you can get right here, get, and if you click on this, you're also going to get a couple bonuses. I'm just saying. So you definitely want to get it and to take it one step further. And if you're looking to escape the friend zone yourself, sign up for a personalized breakthrough call with me, which you can book right here by clicking on the link in the show description and stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day.